Hey guys, welcome to my Wednesday night live. Um, my name is Mel and I am a personal trainer and a behavior change specialist. And I am talking into two different cameras today. Um, one is on my profile and one is on my um, page. This one is not getting great light. Um, oh, so this one's a little not as great. Um, so today's topic is, as you can see from the description, um, patterns of self-sabotage and how your subconscious mind is involved and basically why are you getting in your own way and how can you fix it. So I know that this is a huge um, problem for a lot of people. People say, um, people usually blame motivation. I'm not feeling motivated. Um, you know, I start off strong and then I lose my motivation. And I use the word motivation because I feel like it kind of hits a, a nerve with people and they understand that. But honestly, um, you need to dig a little bit deeper and understand why you're doing what you're doing. It's not necessarily motivation if it's a pattern. So if you have a pattern of self-sabotage, you have to realize that anytime that you have this pattern, that there is your subconscious mind is at play and involved with that. So we want to figure out what is going on. So um, some of the things you want to think about is how do you affect your subconscious mind so that it is no longer um, going against you and how to break these patterns and put in new habits. So that is what I'm gonna be talking about today. So one of the big things is behaviors. So behaviors are, first of all, they are driven by your thoughts and emotions. So you have to figure out um, your thoughts and emotions that are actually driving these behaviors. So the reason why um, people self-sabotage and they don't understand why or how is because it is sub self subconscious, sorry. It's subconscious because these are things that happen outside of your conscious awareness. That's why they're subconscious. So you need to bring them to light. You need to bring them into awareness and so that you can change them. So if you just, um, if you don't allow yourself to examine why you're doing what you're doing, you will continue to repeat the pattern over and over again and sabotage your efforts. So that's what we want to figure out today. Um, so the first thing that you want to do, there's five things that you really want to do to break this down and you do need to take some effort to um, really affect your behaviors. You can't just say, I want to change it. You have to kind of um, examine it a little bit more to dive a little bit deeper. I feel like I'm always having hair issues. I don't know. I, I'm like always touching my hair. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, number one, you need to identify your core belief, your subconscious core belief in why you're doing what you're doing. So with each step, I'm going to kind of give you an example that you can um, use to... Uh, put to your or your own um, circumstances. Hi Jenny, hi Shauna, hi guys. Um, so one is identifying your subconscious, your core belief. And so you wanna, first of all, so what I would suggest is take a look at your day and try to identify the pattern. So normally what I find with my clients and people that I'm talking to and coaching is First part of the day is great, lunch is good, and then things kind of take a turn for the worst. It's either midday or it is the evening, and you have to kind you have to identify what's going on because any of these patterns again are self these self sabotaging patterns are subconscious, and you need to bring these things to awareness. So find out what part of your day are you making these mistakes over and over again. So let's say after dinner you've had a great day and now it's after dinner and that is when things kind of go off the rails and you grab a bag of chips, some soda, you sit down, relax in front of the TV and you blow the whole day. So if you're trying to lose weight, that's definitely not a good habit that you want to get into. So one belief that you might have is, I deserve to relax. 
So after dinner, you grab your chips, you grab your soda, because your subconscious um, belief, core belief is that you deserve this. You've worked hard, you, you, know, you put in all your work today, and now you deserve to relax. So that's, that's the core belief that you have to come with. Why, why is this, why are you doing this action? Number two is, you have to identify the positive intention behind the act because all of our behaviors are gonna be um, pushed with only positive reasons. So we do what we do for a positive reason. It might not have a positive outcome, it might be negative in a lot of ways, but there's gotta be some kind of positive intention behind it and that's the only way we act. We don't act intentionally um, if there's not something positive or we don't get something out of it. So say we're so, um, Say we're using the same example of you had a great day, after dinner you sit down with, in front of the TV with a bag of chips and a soda, and your positive intention behind this might be stress relief. So for you, being able to sit down at the end of the day and relax, this is your stress relief. Some people, it might be smoking a cigarette. Um, there's a lot of different positive intentions you can get via negative habits. These self-sabotaging habits, there's something positive you're getting out of this action. Um, it can be, for some people, comfort. It can be the feeling of control, pleasure, companionship. Um, but let's say this one is stress relief. So once you identify the pattern and your core belief behind it, and then the second one is to identify the positive intention behind it, third is you have to figure out a way to release that emotion. Because like I said before, behaviors are driven by thoughts and emotions. So if you have this emotion behind this negative behavior, you're going to keep doing it. Emotions are really the glue that hold, um, that hold us to our past experiences and patterns. So if you're feeling like eating this food after dinner, even though it is um, getting in the way of your, your goals, um, you need to let go of the idea that it's a stress reliever. So I think things like telling yourself once you've identified this that it's not releasing any stress. You're not actually getting any benefit from this. Um, you might be numbing some of your issues so you're actually avoiding things that you need to deal with. And you could put behind that, okay, when I eat chips and, and drink soda and watch TV after my day, it not only doesn't relieve my stress, it actually causes me stress because then I feel bad about myself, I feel guilty, I get further away from my goals. So you need to actually release the good emotions that you have um, put together with this and actually bring it around to why you don't want to do it and try to relate with that. All right. So the other way is that now that now we're kind of talking into how we're going to change these, these sabotaging um, self um, sabotaging habits is you want to identify an alternative way to meet these positive um, intentions. So if you feel like you're super stressed out and at the end of the day you've been reaching for chips and soda and it's actually getting you away from your goals, you need to figure out another way to relieve stress. So that might be, you know, one way is during your day um, just putting in more things that you can do that are relaxing, that are enjoying. Um, maybe at the end of the day, you are, um, instead of going to reach for food, maybe you, you know, paint your nails. Um, if you're a guy, I don't know, maybe you watch cartoons, <laughs> um, you know, something like that. Or if you have a bad habit of eating in bed, maybe instead of eating in bed, you turn that into a reading in bed is your stress relief. Um, so once you identify that other way to meet those positive needs, you also want to um, identify a healthier way to, um, let's see, identify a healthier way um, to take up that time. So this is where I wanna talk a little bit more about tiny habits. So you've identified the pattern and the belief. You have, um, identified the positive intention behind it. You release those emotions and you gave it, you know, awareness and understanding of what, what, what is really happening. And then you identify here, you, I want you to identify a different habit or something to put in its place to help you with the positive emotions. So like I kind of mentioned before, if you're used to, sorry, I have a cold. Um, 
if you're used to, again, snacking on chips or whatever at the end of the day because you feel like it's a stress relief. And now we've realized that you're doing it and now we know why you're doing it. And then we've gone around and we have removed those emotions that we know are not true that you attach to this action. Now we can put in a different action. And this is called um, something that I learned as a behavior change specialist. It's about tiny habits. So we would anchor a different habit to replace the old habit because one thing is is that a lot of these things are habits yeah they come from the subconscious mind and they're they're they come from um, emotions and thoughts but after a while they become habits like we just do them subconsciously we don't even know why we just kind of get into these habits so the easiest way to um, cut this pattern or break the pattern is put in a new habit so if you're very used to doing the food thing, maybe now to find a different stress relief or something else to bring positive um, feelings to you at the end of the day or help you relax. Maybe you find something else that you enjoy that you can put in that behavior. So say you enjoy um, learning about something or reading or maybe even you um, put in a different kind of snack that's healthier like fruits or vegetables so that you feel good about the action. And now instead of um, after dinner the trigger the, tr the trigger or the anchor would be eating dinner or finishing dinner. And the behavior, the old behavior was grabbing chips and a soda. Instead of after dinner, the anchor um, having the chips and soda, now it would be having a bowl of fruit or reading a book or, I don't know, doing some, something online that interests you, some kind of art project. Um, and that will help you kind of switch your habits, if that makes sense, guys. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so the tiny habit basically is, I'm just gonna go over this because it's really simple, three easy steps. Um, the anchor or the trigger. So it's what, the, something triggers you. So sometimes um, when you first walk into the house, you might instinctually like go to the cupboard and grab snacks. Or if you're a smoker, you, the trigger, the anchor might be jumping into your car, you instinctually like light up a cigarette. It can be whatever it is. So again, looking through your day and finding those patterns, if you find that unhealthy habit, you'll find the anchor or the trigger, something that makes you do it, especially if you're not doing it consciously. So find that anchor and then you're gonna put a healthier habit in its place. So maybe when you jump in the car, um, your healthy, your, your new anchor is you turn on like, some kind of meditative, relaxing music that de-stresses you if, if, you know, smoking a cigarette is like a stress relief for you. Or maybe when you first walk into the house, um, you have a bowl of fruit on the counter and you go right to the fruit. Or maybe when you first walk in the house, you quick tidy up the kitchen and that helps reduce stress because now your house is cleaner. And then after you do that, so after you find your anchor, you put in your new habit, then you have to find a way to celebrate. And this part, I think people, think is kind of goofy but honestly it's not a big deal all you do is like you can have like a little mantra like yeah I did it or I'm awesome or I don't know do a little dance or <laughs> really it doesn't matter what it is but you do want to have like a little mini celebration acknowledging your win because the when you do that it helps cement that new habit in and I'm sorry I think I'm coming down with a cold um, I'm kind of losing my voice all day. Okay, guys? So that's what you want to do. So um, identify what that pattern is. Identify the core belief behind it. Um, identify the positive intentions behind it. Remove those positive intentions and those emotions because, again, emotions drive your behavior. Um, and then you need to figure out something else that's going to give you actual positive emotions that you can kind of put into place of that old habit. But again, the identifying is really important because you want to be aware of it. If you're not aware of it, um, you'll keep doing it and you won't understand why you keep doing it. And it's very important to understand the why so that you can figure out how to change it. And then if you want to, again, add in a new habit, it's very simple. You find what is your new habit and you want to anchor it to something. So again, if you already have a bad habit, figure out what the trigger is and then have that trigger um, trigger a new habit. So you're anchoring the new habit to an old trigger and then celebrate. And if you don't have a specific bad habit or maybe you just want to add in a new habit, you do the exact same thing. So I use this um, 
example a lot because this is something that I did. I wanted a new habit of, I wanted to be able to do pull-ups. So you want this habit to be, at, first of all, something you want to do. You don't want to do something that you don't want to do because it's a lot harder. So find something you want to do and why you want to do it. I literally just wanted to learn how to do pull-ups. So my habit was I put a pull-up bar in my hallway and whenever I walked past that, so the anchor, the trigger was the actual pull-up bar, whenever I walked past it, I would go do a pull-up. So that was my anchor and, you know, in my head I'm just like, yeah, I did it. Like, yes, I did it or, you know, just... Just a little something just to, again, cement those good feelings. And after a while, I just kept doing it, and then pretty soon I could do two, and then I could do three. So that was my anchor. So for you, it might be something completely different. Maybe um, you want to get more ab work, and so now your anchor is maybe your favorite TV show is The Bachelor. I don't know who watches The Bachelor. It's not me. Um, but maybe your favorite show is The Bachelor. So you anchor some ab work or maybe some stretching to that specific show. So if you, maybe you, one of your goals is to be um, more flexible. One of your goals is to strengthen your core. Um, you can anchor that activity to a specific show. So then when you're watching TV, you get some benefits from it. So, um, and then obviously, you know, celebrate a little bit, feeling good because you did your stretching or your ab work during The Bachelor which is dumb TV, but you know, if you're doing something good for yourself, that's another positive win, so it doesn't make it so bad for you. Um, I hope that makes sense. I don't know if anyone out there has any ideas of what kind of habit they'd wanna change or um, if they're having any issues. I mean, please feel free to um, shout out in the comment area if, there's, uh, if you struggle with self-sabotage, if you find yourself um, having the same patterns over and over again, trying to lose weight, but somehow you keep on getting into the same cycle, you keep on um, doing things that you know are going to sabotage your results and you don't know why you're doing them and you want to know how, how we might be able to help you. Um, you can always leave those in the comments and I can help you out the best that I can. Um, but I think that's all I have for you guys. If you want extra help, if you want extra hit, uh, tips, please join um, the Ultimate Female Formula, or it's short for the Ultimate Female Weight Loss and Lifestyle Formula uh, VIP Lounge. I use the link right in the descriptions. I'm in there every day, and I help people out a little bit more if they have questions. And if you want to get an hour-long consult with me, we can actually talk about your specific sabotaging habits and we can kind of I can help you with your subconscious mind and what's going on in there and help you figure out how to break that habit figure out why you're doing it and then come to a conclusion because this, the worst thing is is feeling frustrated and depressed because you're constantly starting over like you have these goals you're really excited really optimistic in the in the beginning and then you find a week two weeks three weeks into it you start doing things that are sabotaging yourself. And you know you're doing them while you're doing them. You just don't understand why and why you can't break those habits. So if you want help breaking those habits so that you can finally reach your goals, um, I have an application in the description also so that we can set up a 60-minute call and we can break it all down for you and give you a strategy to reach your goals and break those nasty habits. All right, guys? Um, I'm glad you guys joined me. I hope hopefully you found this somewhat helpful. Again, when I'm live, if you can, at least on this one, I can see comments. If you have any comments or questions, just shoot them out at me and I will answer them while I'm here right now. Because um, sometimes I think other people's questions can help other people. So um, otherwise, that's all I have for you today. I hope you have a great rest of your evening and I will check you out next time. Bye, guys.